The 2024 pheasant season opens Saturday, October 12th. We're visiting with upland game biologist RJ Gross to go over populations and what hunters can expect this year. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. So our late summer roadside counts, they start July 20th and they run all through August. So the metrics that we look at are pheasants seen, total pheasants per 100 miles, broods per 100 miles, the average brood size and the age ratio. And statewide this year, total pheasants per 100 mile, or right around 95, it was up 25% compared to last year. And then um, broods per 100 miles up 33% compared to last year. Not too bad, but then uh, the age ratio was down right just over two, um, which is still good for pheasants. You're looking at when it's over two, the pheasants are replacing themselves. So for every, ju where for every adult, there were two juveniles, which is good. They're replacing themselves. You always have turnover. Um, and again, coming off of last year, which was such good production, there were a lot more juveniles than adults. Um, that ratio was higher. We manage in four districts for pheasants. Um, you know. Affectionately, they're called the Northwest, Southwest, Northeast, Southeast. Uh, but you know, it, it's the District 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they're counties that are break, bunched together based on eco regions or you know, what type of habitat is in there. So, first, you know, we'll start off with the one that everyone usually comes to North Dakota for is our Southwest or District 3. And that's basically, you know, the northern tier of the Badlands down through all the way to the, the southwest corner of our state and from the Missouri River West. Um, really good production down there this year. Uh, they had the best age ratio and brood size and pheasants per 100 miles were almost back to what they were um, before the 2017 drought. You know, back when we harvested 500,000 roosters. It's not quite back there yet, but I mean, step in the good direction. And then second place, the second best place would be the Northwest part of our state. And when I say Northwest, that's basically the north shores of Lake Skakawea, straight northwest, all the way up into Crosby area, northwest corner. Uh, they had the most pheasants per mile up there this year. Um, not as many routes are done up there as compared to the southwest, so that number's a little bit misleading, but it seemed every route that people were doing, they were seeing pheasants, saw broods, but there were a lot more adults up there as compared to juveniles this year, and that's just, they had such good production last year, so that carried over. Um, and it's not, you know, there's not, they're not focused just in the very far northwest corner and anything like that. When you were around the north shores of Lake Skakawea, production was really good. And there's kind of a break in between that Stanley area, and then you get up in the northwest corner and it was good again. And then what some people remember, you know, back in the, back in the 90s was a really good place was the southeast, or district, district four. And that's basically the Missouri River, um, east and then south of I-94. Uh, not as good as it used to be. It was still still up in the pheasants per mile, or pheasants per 100 mile, and broods per 100 mile, but not very big increases. Um, it's just the habitat is not what it used to be. You know, they're used to, that's where we've lost most of our CRP, a lot of row crop, con, you know, conversion. Small grains are kind of a thing of the past, and you know, every tree row, fence line, things like that are, are coming out. And that's shown, you know, over the last decade, basically pheasants are kind of in a, in a decline. Um, there still will be spots, you know, there's always gonna be those better places in the very far southeast, you know, in like Dickey, Sargent County, um, but it's, it'll be hard to find. And then also when you kind of get towards the Missouri River to the west, there's areas there that are better. And then going up into District 2, which is the northeast, traditionally not pheasant habitat. They had the highest increases when you're talking about percentage-wise, but really small numbers, so those increases are really inflated. Um, but where we saw pheasants, it, it was very good for that district, and that's, you know, that's gonna be most you know, north of I-94 and then farther west. So hunters can help out. Uh, you can go on our website or you know, go to one of our district offices and get what we call wing envelopes, and those, um, Depending on what species you're, har you're harvesting, uh, we'll take pheasant, Hungarian partridge, and uh, sharp-tailed grouse wings and legs. And for, like, for a pheasant, you'll need a leg and a wing. Um, you just look on the envelope, follow the instructions, 
Um, and what we really need is what county was harvested and the date harvested. That way, you know, every winter, me and a couple technicians will go and we'll go through all those wings and we can backdate those from when they were harvested to when they were hatched. And that's how we have to figure out our peak hatch in North Dakota. And we've got 60 years of data on that. And then we use that for things such as, you know, CRP hang dates, management hang dates on our WMAs and everything like that. I mean, one thing, you know, when you're out there this fall, you know, be respectful of landowners. You know, harvest is going to be going on. You know, don't park in the, you know, in the middle of the road. Don't block an approach, you know, leave leave areas for, you know, combines or big equipment to go by. And also, you know, be aware of the conditions in the field, you know, if in our, we're, the drought, some parts of the state are, are drier, uh, you know, our far northwest and far southwest, the see it's creeping in. A little bit drier, you know, don't park your hot vehicle in tall grass, you know, things like that. Don't start a fire, you know, and just be respectful, you know, pick, pick up litter, um, you know, your shotgun shells, everything like that. You know, our, our pheasant population is back to where it was, you know, before the 2017 drought, where we harvested 500,000 roosters. Do I think we can do that again? No, because access was completely different back then. However, I want to encourage people, you know, look up a phone number, knock on a door, things like that. A lot of times people just want to control access to their property. It's not posted just so no one can go out there anymore. Um, you know, again, be respectful, um, you know, kindly ask for permission and don't be afraid to ask for permission. You know, a lot of times you can develop that relationship with a landowner, um, you know, a positive interaction, landowner, hunter, uh, that can only go, you know, that, that goes so far into, into improving the relationship. Uh, hunters, they can expect more adults in their bag this year. Uh, we probably would have a really good pheasant season just on the amount of adults that we saw compared to last year, which can be attributed to the, you know, overwinter survival uh, it, where we barely had a winter. Everything came through really nice. And then we did have good production, you know, where we kind of got a little bit spoiled the last couple years had, you know, above average production. So with all those adults that we had, even though it was a cold, wet June we had, um, you know, impacted chick survival, they're still plenty of birds that are out there to be harvested.